In this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to take a PDF that was plotted from AutoCAD and bring that into Illustrator in order to adjust the line weights and do some live painting. So we've got our drawing here that I just printed from AutoCAD. We've got three drawings on one 24 by 36 and now we're going to bring it into Illustrator. So you can either open up Illustrator and then go File Open and select the PDF or you can right click on the file and then do Open with Adobe Illustrator. I would suggest doing this instead of making a new Illustrator document and doing File Place because this way it'll take your exact page size and you don't have to worry about bringing it in at the incorrect scale. So Now that our drawing is in Illustrator, the first step we want to do is select all of our objects. Then we're going to go up to Object, Clipping Path, and Release. And what this is going to do is if any of the objects are grouped together, it's going to ungroup them so we can edit all of the lines individually. You can see that in the Layers panel, if we expand Layer 1, we have two clip groups here. And these are kind of holding our objects into different groups, which is not what we want. So again, I'm going to select all the objects, go to Object, Clipping Mask, Release. And you can see the change here that now all of our lines are just sitting directly in Layer 1. Next step I want to do is delete any extraneous lines that are not part of the drawing. So in this case, we have kind of a border around our drawing, so we'll delete that. If your PDF came in in a more portrait orientation and your drawings were rotated, so what you can do is click on the Artboard tool, which you'll find over on the left panel. And when you click on that, you can see these two buttons up here. This will switch the orientation of the page between portrait and landscape. And once you have your page in the correct orientation, if your objects are rotated, what you can do is select all the objects. And if you and then if you move your cursor towards either of the four corners, you should get a little rotation handle. And by holding shift and clicking down, you can rotate yours and it'll lock to any 45 degree angle. If you don't hold shift, you can move the drawing around at any angle, but in this case you won't know if it's exactly perpendicular or parallel to the page. So once your objects are correctly oriented on the page, what you want to do is make a new layer for every single AutoCAD layer that's in the drawings. In this example we have our grade line, thick, medium, thin, and then we have a hatch. So I'm going to make a new layer for each one of these line types. To make a new layer we can go into the layers panel there's a button down here that says create new layer. You can double click on the layer name and this is how you rename a layer. So I'll do this for each type of line. So we've got our layers name now. Now I'm going to start with the grade line. So I'm going to select the grade line. Go to select, same appearance. And what this is going to do is select any line that has the same appearance as the one we just selected. In this case it's looking for one with a similar stroke and a similar color as the purple. So hopefully this should select just the other lines that are on the same layer. If you find that it's selecting a little more than you'd like, you can try a different selection method, such as stroke color or stroke weight. So once you've got those objects selected, I'm going to go back to the layers panel. And you'll notice this little blue dot here, and I'm going to drag this up into grade. And what that did was pick all of our objects that we had selected, and then we moved it up to a new layer. If I expand grade, you can see the three objects in there. And if I turn this off, I can verify that those three objects are in the correct layer. So I'm going to repeat this process for all the remaining lines on my PDF file.
So now that everything is in the right layer, I'm just going to turn everything back on. And if you did this correctly, there should be nothing left in layer 1, and I can actually go ahead and delete that. So the whole point of separating out our line weights is so that we can really focus on each layer individually and adjust the appearance just the way we want. So I'm going to start with making all of the lines black and white. So what I can do is select all of our objects. And then under your color panel, if yours doesn't look like this, you can double click on the name color and that'll sort of cycle between the different styles of the palette. And you'll see these two boxes here. One is fill and one is stroke. And the color that you're currently controlling is the box that's overlapping the other box. In this case, it's the stroke. If we want to switch back to the fill, we can just click on fill, and you can see how we can switch between the two. Right now, we have a bunch of question marks for stroke because all of our lines here have different colors. But to change those to black, just make sure we have the stroke here selected, and then we can click on the black here. So that'll make all of our lines black. You could make them a different color if you wanted. But you can use the eyedropper tool down here to pick a color. And if you double click on the stroke, you'll get this color picker box, which will give you a little more control over the color. So now that we've got everything looking black and white, I might want to adjust the line weights a little bit to kind of make the drawing stand out a bit more. So most of the time this is personal preference. Some of your assignments may set up line weights ahead of time that you can follow, but in this case I'm just going to adjust it to what I think uh, looks the best. So gray line I'm just going to bump up, bump up to 5 a bit. I'm going to make my outline a little bit thicker to differentiate it from the background. And right now our hatching is kind of competing with our thin lines here, so I'm going to select hatching actually got to reduce it down to say 0.4 and you also want to make the color gray instead of black so it's not as distracting so I'm just going to drag the this slider down to bring more towards gray so you can see that's looking pretty good right now so that's the basics of bringing line work from AutoCAD into Illustrator so now I'm just going to show you a few extra tips that will help you when working in Illustrator so if you don't have rulers up at the top, one way you can turn those on is go View, Rulers, and then Hide or Show Rulers. Control R is also the shortcut to turn them on and off. And then right now the units for these rulers is points, so if we right click on the ruler we can switch that back to inches. Now say our drawings weren't exactly lined up with each other, they'd be looking something like this and we wanted to align them. So one way to set that up is with guides. So to make a guide, if you just drag your mouse from the ruler and off the ruler, it'll make a guide. And if you hold shift down, that'll help it to lock more incrementally. Instead of doing like really small fractions of an inch, it might lock to every eighth of an inch. So I'm going to move this ruler to roughly about eight. And when you draw guides in Illustrator, unlike InDesign, the guide is actually an object on the page. If I expand the hatching here, you can see that the guide is actually an object. So usually it's best practice to make a separate layer for the guide so that you can lock them and turn them on and off without worrying about deleting them later. So I'm just going to select this guide here, and you can see the blue dot that's indicating that it's in the hatching layer. I'm just going to drag this back up to the guides. So I'm going to make another guide, a horizontal guide, just so I can align these two drawings together. And I'm just going to stick that at the 20 inch mark. I'm just going to go ahead and lock the guides layer here. So this symbol here, this will lock the layers, and the eye next to the lock will turn them on and off. So I'm going to select this first box here in the bottom left. I'm going to click on this bottom line, and then this should snap to one of our guides. And I'm going to click on the left line here, drag it over, and it should snap to that guide. I'm just going to repeat this for our other two boxes.
So in this example, I'll be taking this into InDesign later, and I don't necessarily need all this empty white space around it. Uh, this might make it a little more difficult to size the, the imported PDF on the InDesign board. So what I can do is just crop this down a bit by hitting the Artboard tool. And these controls over here, this shows the width and height for the page. Now I can just drag these little boxes here and actually drag in our page here. Usually I'll try to keep my page size at least to some round number because when I'm bringing the file into InDesign later I want to be able to enter in the exact size so that the scale is correct. So in this case I'm just going to stick with 24 by 16. So we've got all our drawings on our page. We've got our page size cropped a little bit more closer to the drawings. And next we're going to take a look at live paint.